Peace, 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 everyone. Let me know if you all can hear me. How's everybody doing today? Hope everyone's having a lovely day. Happy Saturn day to everyone. It is your girl Empress Shea Marie back for another video. So I know you guys are probably looking like, okay, we haven't finished the other book. And I'm going to explain why that is. And um, it's a real good explanation. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. Uh, give time for people to hop on in y'all like hit the like button for me share this video out for me um this is going to be about an hour or two of reading i think i might give you all two hours today of my time since i haven't been on in a few days plus this is a book i've been anticipating reading all night and morning um it was sent to me a few days ago, and then yesterday, or last, or actually this late this morning, or early this rising, I'm at about maybe 12-ish, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, I literally was up to like 3 or 4 in the morning on a, on a call, a conference call with some beautiful individuals who were actually talking about this book and how this book, uh, everyone needs to read it and how this is like the Holy Grail book. So this is the reason why I've uh, stopped or didn't come on today with the, with the, um, the, the Pure Trust book, the Asset Protection. Um, because this is more so a must read, like ASAP. So this is what we're going to be reading today, you guys. The 0% <clears throat> in this book is by, uh, this book is by Duval Day, okay? And... It is in regards to the secrets of the United States, the power of trust, nationality, banking, and zero taxes. Okay. All right. So um give me a second. I'm gonna check my volume and everything. Make sure that you guys can hear me. I'm gonna check the chat. So bear with me for a moment. Okay, so we got Eric Smith in the building. We got Juella Simmons in the building, Grand Rising. We got Willie Rivers in the building, Grand Rising to you, Brother Willie. I'm doing wonderful. Peace and love to you. Peace and love to all of you all. I do appreciate you all this rising. If you guys want a shout out, definitely put a, you know, give me a shout out in the chat. Um, Grand Rising, Marcus Allen. Grand Rising. We don't say good morning. We say Grand Rising because there's no good in morning. So look up the etymology of morning and you'll understand what I mean when I say that we don't say good morning over here. We say Grand Rising. Um, you know, you're basically putting a spell on yourself when you say good morning. So we don't use those type of terms. Um, you know, the, the English language is a bastardized language you all so we have to be careful of the words that we're using and be knowledgeable about the definitions and the meanings of these words because they can get you caught up in a world of trouble okay so we're going to be reading about the secrets of the united states the power of trust nationality banking and zero taxes all right you guys let me get those thumbs up Thumbs up in the building. And make sure y'all sharing this out. Everybody 
needs to be getting this knowledge. Everyone needs to be equipping themselves with this knowledge and getting an understanding of the truth of this world. <clears throat> I do apologize if my voice is a little deep today, you guys, but it's just been uh, one of those weeks, another one of those weeks of trial and error and trying things and getting let down and things of that nature, but we still not giving up. We still manifesting destiny and manifesting greatness, manifesting our wealth that the re that the wealth of the wicked that was stored up is being returned to the righteous people. And so, um, you know, <clears throat> please excuse my voice today. I've definitely been working hard and just trying to um, work in overtime. Absolutely harmonious. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the read. I'll definitely check the comments as I much as I possibly can. I am uh, sharing my screen. Uh, so because of that, um, because I'm sharing my screen, I can't really see the comments as much but i'll check back and forth with you all see how y'all doing so give me a few seconds and then i'll get started okay All right, I had to grab me some water, so I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and get into this read. Let me go back over here. All right, so the 0% is what it is. 0% secrets of the United States, the power of trust, nationality, banking, and zero taxes. Written by Duval Day. Oh goodness, hold on y'all. I gotta grab oh wow. I gotta grab the laptop charger. One moment. My apologies, I should have been more prepared than this, but I was so, I want to read this book and it's like, <clears throat> the only way I can concentrate when I'm reading a lot is if my computer is reading it to me, which for this particular book, I couldn't do that. So I said, well, let me come on and go live and read it to my people because by me when I'm reading out loud, I can kind of concentrate a little bit more. So, you know, reading to you all helps me to be able to comprehend and get a little understanding. So it says copyright 2021 by Imago, Imago Day Publishing, Inc. So I want to also put my disclaimer. Matter of fact, um, well, I got my disclaimer in the chat, in the uh, description area of the video, but um, I do want to say fair use for this book. I do not own the rights to this book. 
So fair use, I am claiming fair use to be able to come on here and use this book and read today. It says printed in the United States of America, no part of this book may be used or re reproduced in any manner whatsoever without the prior written permission of the copyright owner, except in the case of brief quotations or references embodied in critical articles or reviews. This book is the work of nonfiction names, individuals, businesses, organizations, places, events, incidents, and laws are strictly used to express information made available to the public. The information contained in this book is provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice in any subject matter, but considered a lawful guide in common law, proper counsel from a private lawyer or private personal or professional, I'm sorry, advice is advised from acting on the basis of any of all the content included in this book. The author is, is and its associated persons, whether natural or artificial, may freely write and publish their sentiments on all subjects being responsible for the abuse of that right. And no law shall, pass, shall be passed to restrain or abridge the liberty of of speech or of the press nine uh section 9 1849 california constitution no bill of attainder ex, po, ex post facto law or law <clears throat> impairing the obligation of contracts shall ever be passed section 16 1849 california constitution he who takes with notice of an equity takes subject to that equity okay so we got the cable table of contents and check out the introduction. Okay. So it says, most people are not entirely sure what they want to do or how to go about accomplishing it. So they resort to getting an education as if that's the cure all to one's wealth aspiration. Graduating high school or college can be a huge accomplishment for most citizens, permanent residents, and foreign nationals in the United States, especially if it means being the first to graduate in the family, being led to believe that the world's treasures are within arm's reach, and so many options for success are now available. However, selecting the right path can be a course of it in itself. Make sure y'all can hear me over here. Okay, I'm unmuted. Okay. After all, time is short and time is money. Just as all people have an innate ex existential drive. I'm sorry, ex existential drive. I hope I'm saying that word right. Existential drive to understand how they are and why they are here. They also desire that to create generational wealth. Some will be fortunate uh, enough to locate <clears throat> a reputable firm, but in their time and reach retire, put in their time and reach retirement or even learn a trade to one day run a successful business but for some not so much others have been in the work field with or without secondary education creating one financial plan after another renewing paying off student loans and credit card debt repeatedly for some reason the debt doesn't go away fast enough to see a different in difference in life life feels stagnant if only wages covered enough monthly expenses to save enough money to eventually fire the boss and start the right business to earn money needed to pay off debts and finally experience freedom. So how does one start a business? There are two types of classes in the world, the one percenters and the 99 percenters. Indeed, it is so secret, I'm sorry, it is no secret that the best Fortune 500 companies have high-end attorneys who manage the step-by-step -step <clears throat> setup process for their clients' businesses and at a hefty price charge that 
most people may not immediately be fortunate enough to afford at first. However, vigilance and never-ending studious mindset position the individuals into the one percenters realm. Many have the investor's mentality and have thought long and hard about joining the 90s, 90% of the world's millionaires who earned their wealth through real estate investing. Overall, people are just tired of the 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, or what has become a more desirable work schedule, the 4 tens. Certainly time is something that cannot be re refunded and every second deserves to be spent efficiently and by choice. So if y'all know what, I'm going to go back because I don't know what the four tens is. I've been out the work for, for a while now. So I'm going to come back to the chat, drop in the chat and tell me what the four tens is because I have no idea what that is. Is that a work schedule or what is what is the four tens? Can someone tell me? So I'm gonna continue reading, but y'all um, come back and check the chat so y'all can let me know what that is. <clears throat> Certainly time is something that cannot be refunded and every second deserves to be spent efficiently and by choice. Again, this time, again, time is short and time is money. Everyone has either thought about going to the banks for cash to consolidate or invest how the cash is managed with the attached interest is very important. Either borrowers pay the debt and have fun or borrow to spend for a profit, which in turn pays the debt in a good life. This is what intelligent investors would call good debt. Everyone who has prepared to enter into a, pre, a repayment agreement has planned financial strategies before the loan application is approved. Although FIFO scores may not be at their best with high hopes, it should be good enough for the bank to provide funding, right? Going into the bank can be nerve wracking, whether it's in person with a local banker or via an online application. So many people have experienced bankers explain credit denials with, com with comments such as, it looks like TransUnion and Equifax scores are exceptional. However, the experience score does not meet our requirements. If a cosigner is available, we may be able to move forward. Sounds familiar, right? The uneasy feeling of credit rejection from the bank is a terrible experience having to involve a family member or a trustworthy friend to provide their credit worthiness is even worse. If traditional funding fails, then what else is there for a real estate investment deal? Indeed, all beginner real estate investors have scoured online to find many methods of no money, no credit investment strategies from an endless list of real estate gurus. After all, the great Robert Kiyosaki had explained in his writings that real teachers are defined as teachers who practice what they teach unless general public school teachers, I'm sorry, unlike general public school teachers, their multi-layered degrees qualify them to teach the theory of the subject. In all actuality, generating profits from practical experience is lacking from the public school system teachers and professors. The truth is no teacher or professor in the secondary or post-secondary education sector will tell their students that they may take, that they can take today's lessons in class and go out into the world and make a successful profit. So let me stop there. This is very, it's, this is a very good point because people always say all the time, you know, asking you, have you had certain experiences or have you done this and done that? And it's like, you know, you guys, You'll go and get a degree and learn from someone who hasn't necessarily lived that life that they're teaching you. They're just teaching you a theory. But you, if I'm bringing you a theory, because I don't have a bachelor's degree or whatever the case may be, which is, you know, if you ask me, it's what they wanted you to know. You got a degree in exactly what they wanted you to know to be a good slave for that particular field. 
pretty much is all it is. And we've talked about this before. So, you know, this was a very good point. <clears throat> so it says several real estate gurus charge an arm and a leg for their seminars. And worst of all, the reviews from their students alert many people to be aware of a scam or brilliant Ponzi scheme. The only profit the students have made is a whooping zero. <laughs> whopping zero. Simultaneously, the appetite for freedom and wealth still grows. While sending and hearing more millionaires displaying their lavish life or introducing a buy my money making course ad on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, their success is attractive, but the frustration from the due diligence process can be daunting. In America, the public schools have taught Americans to go to school, get a job, save money in a 401k, live within their means, finance a house, and pay taxes. And what exactly does that model produce? Anyone who has followed that model or knows someone who has certainly knows it most certainly leads to more debt on account of financial banking of the financial banking system that has been in place in the United States ever since the enactment of the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. This system is known as a central banking operation that functions from a fractional reserve system, which does nothing for the economy but increase the national debt and inflates the U.S. dollar, raising the cost of everyday goods and services. What happens when a college degree allows a salary cap that finally reaches a threshold and cannot sustain everyday expenses due to inflation? The answer is more debt and more time needed to continue education, seeking another degree to earn an additional annual twenty to $35,000. Suppose an employee continues school and completes the extra training and successfully obtains that salary increase and reaches retirement living off a fixed income. The cost of everyday goods and services continues to rise, surpassing the fixed income. What happens when the retiree's property tax becomes too expensive because of the surrounding neighborhood's increase in property value due to gentrification? What other options are there at the age of retirement? As scary as it sounds, it, the reality is that the elderly community is working past the age of 65 at local retail stores and offices. That's why you see them at the, at the door greeting people every day. It would easily make sense to increase current wage earnings and reduce the current tax bracket to a low to as low as 0% to encourage significant savings for other entrepreneurial endeavors. <clears throat> what if federal, state, social security, and Medicare taxes were not withheld from employee earnings and did not have to be paid during tax season? What if that were the case for self-employment 1099 information filings as well? How much of that could be saved in the right asset building account for the future. There are precisely seven tax brackets for most ordinary incomes in the United States. 10% tax, 12% tax, 22% tax, 24% tax, and 32% tax. 35% tax and 37% tax. And believe it or not, tax is voluntary. Many people here in the United States live beyond the American dream, whether they are United States citizens, United States nationals, or nationals. Many of them understand life is not a journey, but instead a process. The life of a journey goes up and down, not knowing when or where the goal is nigh. A process to a process is tested time and time again with successful results, no matter the environment, and has a foreseeable end before it begins. The wealthy understand the necessary process of obtaining generational wealth from a simple truth, which is understanding how the United States 
truthfully came into existence, how it operates commercially, and how it applies to its inhabitants. <clears throat> the United States Constitution speaks of three different classes of people, the people, the subjects, and the citizens. What type are the majority today? And what and is one better than the other? It is a fact that there are approximately 11 millionaires since, I'm sorry, 11 millionaires, I'm sorry, 11 million millionaires since 2017 and 788 billionaires in the United States since 2019. And most of them do not pay any taxes despite the famous saying, the more you make, the more they take. Believe it or not, it has nothing to do with illegal tax evasion or hiding money in shell companies in tax haven countries. What exactly do the millionaires and billionaires know? And why does it seem like the educated alumni are the first to complete an unemployment application during a government financial crisis? How are the wealthy fairly procuring extreme amounts of money? Don't the tax brackets don't the tax bracket rules eat up most of their profits? How do they maintain good credit for 100% loan approvals several times a year? Does it take years to save substantial amounts of money to start a tax exempt business? The answer to these meaningful questions have always been at the forefront, but knowing where to look and applying the information is another thing. Each chapter in the zero percent will provide the hidden answers many financial titans keep within their fold to resolve most americans financial issues one must evaluate the various strategies of real estate investing and banking credit secrets based on fair isaac corporation or fico entering a new commercial status all while comprehending the truth about the United States and its affiliates. All resources are provided for everyone to easily obtain certified copies of the undeniable evidence before the construction of the United States of America Republic government. It's imperative to explain the step-by-step -step process to start any business the right way and obtaining federal and state recognition in their system to never be required to file not one tax return statement from day one. Instead, if it is the company owner's choice, a well-executed filing would provide a refund in the exact amount earned in the, fis in the fiscal tax year. Wow. This is just one of the many trade secrets kept by the one percenters that operate under treaty law with the United States derived from God's ordinance. The Internal Revenue Service and the United States Treasury Department are in sync with biblical treaty law. The commencement of businesses or business in the United States, and pay attention to how United States of America is spelled or everywhere in the world requires an understanding of biblical trade secrets regarding trust which affects commerce practiced by the wealthiest nations on earth, such as the Jews, the Mennonites, Chinese, Saudi Arabians, Armenians, etc. Although these steps are procedures and subject to charge over time, <clears throat> I'm sorry, subject to change over time, learning the com commerce rules will lead to many untold truths about one's nationality and its importance to encourage all aspects of stranger and wiser families. Be prepared for the in-depth legal jargon and it is recommended to repeatedly read the information until fully comprehended. So that's why we're gonna read this live so that we can come back and listen to it over and over again so that we can get it between the ears and get an understanding, get an understanding, understanding of the words and the meanings of what is being said. So I'm going to come back and check on you guys in the chat. So we got eight people watching. Um, let's see here. 
have to get ready for work. Peace. Okay, Brother Eric, peace to you. Um, don't work too hard out there. Okay. So, let me check one more thing, you guys. Okay. All right. So back to the reading. <clears throat> Moving forward, it says the United States is a what? It's widespread that the United States is short for saying the United States of America, but how exactly can an entire country be on the same playing field as Apple, Amazon, Facebook, or Microsoft corporations? It is accurate, and Congress does not hide the truth in their code and statutes. It may sound awkward to the majority because the elected officials never refer to the country as a company. In Title 20 U.S. Code 3002, Section 15, United States means A, a federal corporation. The United States Corporations Articles of Incorporation filed number 100009 was filed with Secretary of the State of New York July 15, 1925 with its principal office in the Centen Centennial uh, build Building, Tallahassee, Leon County, County, Section 3 and 4 states. The maximum number of shares which this corporation is authorized to outstanding, I'm sorry, to have outstanding at any time is 100, each of which shares shall have a par value of one hundred dollars section three the amount of capital with which the corporation will begin business is five hundred dollars section four a certified copy of this imperative uh, historical document can be obtained in florida revealing that the corporation is perpetual meaning everlasting her certificate provides its directors as chief executive officers, chief financial officers, and secretary of the United States Corporation. Mm. These individuals are private officers. The public officers known as Donald Trump and Mike Pence or Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. However, this document is indeed not the origin of the United States of America in march 18th of 18 i'm sorry in march of 1861 abraham lincoln gave his first sorry about that abraham lincoln gave his first inaugural speech surprisingly the address translated to the english language from the arabic Ara arabic language and many other treaties the united states has with the aboriginal and indigenous people Y'all hearing this? They were here in the North, South, and Central America long before Columbus. A, short, a straightforward search within the Library of Congress to find his speech titled Abraham Lincoln First Inaugural Address, 1861, which the first paragraph cites. In compliance with a custom as old as the government itself, I appear before you to address you briefly and to take in your presence the oath prescribed by the Constitution of the United States to be taken by the president before he enters on the execution of this office. I do not consider it necessary to, at present for me to discuss those matters of administration about which there is no special anxiety or excitement. Apprehension seems to exist among the people of the, south, of the southern states that by the accession of a republic administration, their property and their peace and personal security are to be endangered. There, there has never been an, an, any reasonable cause for such a apprehension. Indeed, the amplest evidence 
to the contrary, has all the while existed and been open to their inspection. It is found in nearly all the published speeches of him who now addresses you. I do not, I do but quote from one of those speeches when I declare that I have no purpose directly or indirectly to interfere with the institution of slavery in the states where it exists. I believe I have no lawful right to do so, and I have no inclination to do so. Abraham Lincoln, first inaugura inaugural address, 1861. <clears throat> Some keynotes to address regarding the president's speech. First, they are high tensions coming from the South Southern states regarding the property, i.e. their slaves and President Lincoln's policy regarding the subject matter. He states that he has no plans to interfere with the slave trade in those particular states. Anyone who has studied history on a general level understands that Lincoln is known as the great emancipator who freed the black slaves from involuntary servitude in 1865. Yet he states he does not want to get involved with the institution of slavery. Secondly, the proof of a mistranslation from the Arabic language to the English language when Lincoln, when Lincoln states, it is found in nearly all the published speeches of him who now addresses you. If Lincoln is the one giving the speech, he would not address himself as him in the third person, but instead in the first person, such as, it is found in nearly all the published speeches that I have addressed you. One could think that, one can think, how can such a mistake happen within an undisputable lawful congressional record? A more accurate question could be, why is President Lincoln speaking in Arabic in his inaugural speech in North America in 1861? Surprisingly, Latin was the common language in the entire world. There are words in one language that do not exist in another language to describe it adequately. The, Cong the congressional record continues to reveal that President Lincoln explains how the corporation became to be an quote. Descending from these general principles, we find the pro pro proposition that in legal contemplation, the union is perpetual, confirmed by the history of the union itself. The union is much older than the constitution. It was formed, in fact, by the Articles of Association in 1774. It was matured and continued by Declaration of Independence in 1776. It was further matured and the faith of all then 13 states expressly plighted and engaged that it should be perpetual by the Articles of Confederation in 1778. And finally, in 1787, one of the declared objects for ordaining and establishing constitution, the Constitution was to form a more perfect union. Abraham Lincoln First Inaugural Address, 1861. According to President Lincoln, the United States Corporation found its existence from the Articles of Association in 1774. So what exactly are Articles of Association? These articles is a document that specifies the regulations for a company's operations and defines its purpose. A company's Articles of Incorporation detail what the organization can and cannot do, including appointing directors and handling financial records, very similar to a select group of individuals who decide to start a corporation or LLC and its articles of incorporation or organization must be approved by the state's secretary of state because the corporation or LLC is seeking existence from the state in which it will transact business. The most obvious question is if the individuals who seek to start a company must first obtain approval from the Secretary of State, then who approved the United States Corporation's 
article, what authority permitted the U.S. corporation to exist? After all, Abraham Lincoln did say what say that the Constitution did not come about until 1787. To answer this question, examining the Articles of Association, 1774 itself should provide great insight. It's read. It reads. So let me check the chat before I continue, and I'm gonna drink some water. Okay, so it reads, let me make sure I'm unmuted. All right. It reads that from from and after the first day of December next, we will not import into British America from Great Britain or Ireland any goods, wares, or merchandise whatsoever from any other place, any such goods, wares, or merchandise as shall have been exported from Great Britain or Ireland, nor we will, nor will we after that day import any East India tea from any part of the world, nor any molasses syrup, syrups, uh, panelis, coffee, or pimento from the British plantations or from Dom- from Dominica, nor wines from Madeira or West in- or the Western Islands, nor foreign indigo. Article one, we will neither import nor purchase any slave imported after the first day of December next, after which time we will wholly uh, discontinue the slave trade and will neither be concerned in it in it ourselves nor will we hire our vessels nor sell our commodities or manufacturers to those who are concerned in it article two the first article tells us that commercial i'm sorry tells us that commerce took place under british america and various merchandise could cease importation from Great Britain to East India. A important fact is found in the second article that no slave of any kind, meaning voluntary or involuntary servitude, will be allowed due to the slave trade being discontinued. How is it that slavery was allowed within the southern states in as Lincoln addressed and then abolished in North America in 1865, if slavery was never intended to occur as per the initial document that created the United States in 1774. Another fair question is, who exactly were the slaves involved in the slave trade during that time? A lot of attention and condemnation is directed towards the African slave trade tragedy. The 16th and 17th century is when this took place. However, another equally despicable trading of humans was taking place around the same time in the Mediterranean's uh, proximity. The Barbary pirates enslaved approximately 1.25 million Europeans and their lives were just as pitiful as the Africans. They were referred to as white slaves of the Barbary slave trade. Slavery is one of the oldest transactions known to man, and the records of the slave trade date back to the code of Hammurabi in Babylon in the 18th century are available. People from virtually every significant culture, uh, civilization, and religious background have made slaves of their own and enslaved other peoples. However, comparatively little attention is focused on the prolific slave trade carried out by the pirates of Khazars 
along the Barbary coast, as the Europeans called it in that period, in what is now the empire of Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, beginning around 1600 AD in the 13th and 14th centuries. Christian pirates were primarily from Catalonia and Sicily, which conquered all Admiralty seas, posing a constant threat to merchants. It was not until the Ottoman Empire's expansion in the 15th century that the Barbary Khazars Corsair, started to become an, in, an irritable problem to Christian vessels. While the Barbary slave trade is depicted as as Muslim Khazars um, capturing white Christian victims, the pirates were not concerned with the ethnicity or religious orientation of those held in captivity. Slaves in Barbary could be of any color with multiple backgrounds, black, brown, or white, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, Jewish, or Muslim. It was all about their class of commercial status, which dictated slavery or not. <clears throat> the pirates were not only Muslim, however, English privateers and Dutch captains of the Dutch Indian India Trade Company also exploited the ever-changing loyalties of how neighboring friends could it could quickly become enemies and enemies could become colleagues with the stroke of a pen as per private contracts. Hmm. The captive slaves by the Barbary pirates faced a dark and horrible future. Many perished on the ships. during the long voyage back to North Africa, North America at this time due to disease or lack of sustenance and hydration. Okay, so y'all see this is, uh, they went back and forth to North Africa, which is North America at this time due to the disease and lack of sustenance and dehydration. Those who survived were taken to slave markets where they would stand for hours while buyers inspected them before selling at public or private auctions. Once slaves were purchased, they were immediately forced to work in several ways. Men were assigned the hard manual labor using their strength, such as working the quarries or heavy strenuous constructions, while women and children were used for housework and sexual servitude or sexual servitude. At night, the slaves were placed into prisons called bag bagnios that were uncomfortably hot and overcrowded. However, the worst fate for a Barbary slave would endure working the oars of galleys. Warrors were shackled together, seated, and never allowed to stand or leave their posts. No form of privacy was allowed in the oars only sleeping, eating, defecation, and urination at the oar's seat. Managing overseers would crack the whip over the bare backs of any slave considered not to be working hard enough. As previously stated, Dutch captains were working alongside, alongside the barbaric pirates who were uh, associated with a significant Atlantic slave trade company named the Dutch West India, India Company, whose native name is the uh, Geo, Geo, Geo Oride, uh Western Dice Compagni. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing this stuff incorrectly, guys. Let's see. I'm going to try to uh, look it up, but it was a chartered West India company founded on June 3rd, 1621 by William Lucilix and Jesse DeForest and 
other Dutch merchants and foreign investors, the company was permitted a charter for a trade monopoly founded within the Dutch West Indies. It is known that the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands granted this permission under the Empire of Morocco and gave jurisdiction over Dutch participation in the Atlantic slave trade, Brazil, the Caribbean, and North America. Looking back at Walt Disney's Pirates of Caribbean's film franchise, British America always displayed their Dutch West or East India Company flag while at sale. Fighting against the pirates, i.e. Barbary pirates, all slaves within the company were, sat, were classified as the Dutch West India Company employees and took on the identity Indian. This is where the term Indian originates. The trading company could operate in West Africa and the Americas, which further included what is known today as the United States outlying possessions. There were slaves of all kind, of all skin tones coming to the Americas, not just from Africa, contrary to popular belief. And as told in public school textbooks, to refer back to the original question, who played the Secretary of State's role authorizing the Articles of Associations of 1774, permitting the British America Corporation to transact agricultural and merchandise business on North American lands, the great Moor, the Sultan, in connection with his majesty's King George, governed many dominions and permitted the Anglo-Saxon traders from Great Britain to begin their agricultural conquest on the east of North America, ancient Egypt, Mahometan nation, which developed into the 13 colonies which led to the development of the Department of Agriculture in 1862. The Atlantic slave trade aligned with the Dutch West, the Dutch West India Trading Company on the colony's territories found its way into southern states of America. Now, what exactly is a Moor? A Moor is currently known today as a Black or African American with a complexion formerly known as a swathy, dark olive skin or tawny yellowish red golden skin the term more is throughout the 1599 geneva bible describing everyone to be swarthy and tawny complexion the ne the newer translated bibles per purposely replace the moors with phoenicians ethiopians greeks and he or hebrews intermarrying took place between the moors and the less melanated slaves referred to as quadroons as person, a person who is one quarter more ancestry and octroons, a person who is one eighth more ancestry or hexadecarons, which is a person which, who has one sixteenth more ancestry. Intermarrying led to mulattoes a person mixed with white and more ancestry, especially a person with one white and one more parent. The Sultan, also referred to as the Imperial Majesty, permitted the Articles of Association of 1774 for the British American Corporation. That very document stated that no slavery of any kind would take place within North America. The Anglo-Saxons of Great Britain were under slavery themselves, controlled by the British Moors, i.e. Brutish Moors, including the European Slavic slaves and, other, and others were being mistreated and brought to America, all while under the reign of George, King George III, a Moor. The European Slavics, the Africans, the Octoroons, etc., and other highly melanated people were branded Negro colored, Indian, Black, remained as slaves except for the Anglo Saxon people. 
The others were considered a rebel group and promoted insurrection against the British or brutish Moors. King George III was a Moor who possessed a plenipotentiary, a plenipotentiary action. Okay, I had to spell that out, sign that out, y'all. Ruled Britain as a dominion of Morocco, Mahimata nation, under the Sultan, and authorized the Declaration of Independence of 1776, freeing the Anglo Saxons from the brutish Moors to inhabit the available territories of incorporated brutish America, America with the colonies. For a certified photo photograph of his most sacred majesty king george the third write the following mailing address so if you want to get a copy a certified copy of the most high the, of his most sacred majesty king george the third you have to write the science museum of of london ex exhibition uh road london Southwest 7 to DD United Kingdom and request an authenticated copy as seen on the following page. So this is he, the culprit. Okay. He looks like a mulatto. Check the chat. How y'all doing? What y'all think about what 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 y'all think about? The reading so far. Grand Rising, happy to catch her live. Grand Rising, Tanya Awad. Um, all governments are corrupt, absolutely. Can anyone name an honest government? Nope, I can't. Hello from Chilliwack, British Columbia. Greetings, Mr. Norm. So y'all see, y'all see the culprit, right? Pretty pretty much <laughs> did the did all of the dirty work. Uh oh. Okay. So here it is. That is he. Peace and love, Grand Rising, honey. Um, Grand Rising, Don Ross, welcome. Y'all make sure y'all hit those like buttons for me. Let me get the thumbs up. So I'm going to continue on reading. Let me go back. All right. This is definitely enlightening to me. This is a great read. That's why I've been, uh, I've been like, I'm working off of few hours of sleep mind you because I didn't go to sleep to about four woke up at about 6 30 and I've been up ever since um and I keep getting distracted through, during this read so that's why I decided to come live with it um because I was going to wait and finish the the, the the pure trust book the asset protection book but I've kept feeling led to read this book and I'm glad I did because this is very enlightening you guys very, very enlightening, and it's making a lot of sense. Although the Declaration of Independence of 1776 freed the slaves, slavery was still oppressive throughout the 13 col colonial territories. It was repackaged and sold in a new form known as the debtor's camp. Abraham Lincoln stated it was the Article of Confederation of 1778 to follow the Declaration of Independence. The former British American Corporation would later be known as the United States of America in Congress assembled. The Articles of Confederation kindly addresses all in the one in the onset. It says, quote, to all whom these presents shall come, we the undersigned delegates of the states affixed to our names send greetings whereas the delegates of the united states of america in congress assembled did on november 5th in the year of our lord 1777 
and in the second year of the independence of america agreed in certain articles of confederation and perpetual union between the states of new hampshire massachusetts bay uh rhode island and providence plantations Con uh, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. In 1787, the United States of America's Constitution was finalized to make a perfect union between all the states during a constitutional convention. It was all a republic in an attempt to bring together the Powhatans or Powhatan. Powhatan, Powhatan's Confederacy. Forgive me for the misinterpretation or mispronunciation. And the Iroquois Confederacy. In New York on November 1st, 1789, George Washington of the Washita tribe wrote a letter to his Masonic brother, Imperial City Hamadi, uh, Mohammed, I'm sorry. This letter is fascinating due to the unknown truth that the two confederacies, Powhatan and Iroquois, were at war with each other regarding matters of the right to leave the property and trust to their heirs who were mulattoes from the intermarrying and Indian women of the Dutch slave trade. Wow. It was against the Mahimodan law to turn over the property from a, a creditor or one who held title of nobility over to one who had a debtor status, which was not of full blood descent. Title of nobility was the real issue that motivated the civil war between the confederacies and the apprehension within the southern states that Lincoln was referring to in his inaugural speech of 1861. The letter from Washington in the letter from Washington to the Emperor can be found within the Library of Congress or on Founders Archive gov forward slash docus dash mints. It reads to Sidi Mohammed since the date of the letter which the late Congress by their president, meaning previous Republican more president addressed to your imperial majesty the united states of america have thought proper to change their government meaning the moors of the continental congress assembled and to institute a new one meaning from republic to democratic agreeable to the constitution of which i have the honor of herewith enclosing a copy the time necessary employed is that our is I'm sorry, the time necessarily employed in this arduous task and the derangements occasioned by so great, though peace peaceable and revolution, meaning to peacefully change the political system of one's country, will apologize and account for your majesty's not having received those regular advices and marks of attention, meaning blackmail or tax payment for protected services from the United States, which the French, when, which the friendship and magnanimity, meaning generous and forgiving an insult of your conduct towards them afforded reason to expect. The United States, meaning corporation, having unanimous, you, unanimously appointed me to the supreme executive, meaning having the power to put plans, actions, or laws into effect, authority in this nation, your majesty's letter of the August 17th, 1788, which by reason of the dissolution, meaning the closing down or dismissal of the Republic of the late government remained unanswered has been delivered to me. I have also received the letters which your Imperial Majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the Bashaws of Tunis and Tripoli. 
and I present to you the sincere, sorry about that, and I present to you the sincere acknowledgments and thanks for, of the United States for the important mark of your friendship for them. We greatly regret that the hostile disposition of those regencies towards this nation who have never <clears throat> who have never injured them is not to be re removed on terms in our power to comply with within our territories meaning within 13 colonies there are no mines either of gold or silver and this young nation just recovering from the waste of desolation of a long war meaning the civil war including the wars between tunis tripoli iroquois and Powhatan, uh, have not yet, have not as yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce, but our soul is bountiful and our people industrious, and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends. The encouragement which our majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions meaning territories of the Mahometan uh, nation. The punctuality with which you have caused the treaty with us to be observed and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor made a deep impression on the United States and confirmed their respect for and attachment to your imperial majesty. It gives me pleasure to have this opportunity of assuring your majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation, meaning United States Corporation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsist between our empire and them, and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion of convincing your majesty of the high sense which is which in common with the whole nation, I entertain of the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence, meaning the quality of kindness of your majesty in the course of the approaching winter, the national legislator, which is caused by the former name of Congress, will assemble all I shall take care that nothing be omitted that may be necessary to cause the correspondence between our countries to be maintained and conducted in a manner agreed in a manner agreeable to your majesty and satisfactory to all the parties concerned in it may the almighty bless your imperial majesty our great and magnanimous friend with his constant guidance and protection written at the city of new york the first day of december 1789 addressed to our great and magnanimous friend, His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Morocco. From George Washington to Sadidi Mohammed, December 1st, 1789. You can find us at the founders.archives.gov. Okay. Regarding the penal colonies and mentioned, as mentioned, the former Moors known as the Negro, the Black, the Color, the Octoroon, and even the Indian employee of the Dutch slave trade would eventually accumulate great amounts of debt from the loss of title of nobility. Working in the 13 colonies, debts were paid to the Department of Agricultural Collections Department in contract with the Dutch East West India Trade Com Trading Company. The inhabitants of the debtor prisons were to work off their debt as the Mohedian law was ignored by the Moors, intermingling their seed with foreigners and seeking to pass their inheritance to their offspring. The various wars continued, leaving the Sultan with no chance but to strip their title of nobility away to preserve the lands and the law. New trustees would emerge and control their inheritance and trust, placing the Moors' remnants to become indebted and to endure the trials of Job. Of Job, trials of Job. 
in the Bible and the Quran, Job experienced loss, loss and hardship that no man has ever experienced. The British Anglo-Saxons new trustees used colonial North America as a, a penal colony through indentured servitude. Merchants transported convicts and Indians auctions, auctioned to plantation trustees upon arrival to the colonies. An estimated 50,000 British convicts, Indian employees, were delivered to colonial North America. Wow. Transported convicts represented perhaps a quarter of all British immigrants during the 18th century. For example, the colony of Georgia was founded by James Edward Oglethorpe, Oglethorpe, who originally intended to use prisoners taken largely from debtor prisons, creating a debtor colony where the prisoners could learn trades and work off their debts. Every a photograph or painting of a black slave, adult or child working on the plantation was attributed to this purpose. A debtor prison or a colony for nothing more than working off debts, not slave brought to America from Amer from Africa alone. General James Edward Oglethorpe founded the Georgia Corporation known today as the state of Georgia. The general, including other trustees such as Thomas Marriott and a forefather of J.W. Marriott, of the colony of Georgia agreed with the Creek Nation to become the land's trustees to collect debts up to his majesty, King George. The Creek Nation's lands had become populated with Dutch India Trading Company employees, Indians that assumed the land from the native Moors due to intermarrying and death from many wars. The collection of debts to the colony of Georgia was collected from the Indians, with also known as $5 Indians, to surrender their rebellion and insurrection against Great Britain. The trustees of the colony of Georgia would become the equitable owners in exchange for $300,000 consideration, leaving the Creek nations as tenants and commons. The evidence of this trade can be reviewed within the Treaty of Savannah of 1733. The Georgia Historical Quarterly, March 1920, Volume 4, Number 1, page 3 through 16, which reads, To all to whom this present shall come, I, Stephen Theodore Jansen, Lord Mayor of the City of London, in pursuance of an act of parliament made and passed in this fifth year of the reign of our sovereign lord king our sovereign lord king george the second entitled an act for the more easy recovery of debts in his majesty's plantations and colonies in america <clears throat> page four the georgia historically quarterly march 1920 volume four number one and they do acknowledge the grant they have already made to the treaty to the trustees for establishing the colony of georgia in america all the lands upon savannah river as far as the ogeechee and all the lands along the sea coast as far as the river st john's and as high as the tide flows and all the islands as far as the said river, particularly the islands of Frederica, Cumberland, and Amelia, though to which they have given the names of his majesty, King George family, out of gratitude to him. But they declare that they did and do reserve to the Creek Nation the lands of the lands from pipe pipe makers bluff to savannah and the islands of saint catherine's asiba and sapello and they further declare that all the said lands are held by creek nation as tenants in common wow page seven the 
Georgia Historical Quarterly, March 19, uh, 1920, Volume 4, Number 1. The Charter of the Georgia... The Charter of Georgia of 1732 can be examined from the Lillian Goldman Law Library, the Avalon Project that reads, As whereas, and whereas we have been well assured that if we will be most graciously pleased to erect and settle a, corpor a corporation for the receiving, managing, and disposing of the contributions of our loving subjects, divers, uh, diverse persons would be induced to in, to contribute to the uses and purposes aforesaid. Know ye, therefore, that we have for the consideration aforesaid and for the better and more orderly carrying on the said good purposes of our special grace, certain knowledge, and mere motion, willed, ordained, constituted, and appointed, and by these presents for us, our heirs and successors, will do will, ordain, constitute, declare, and grant that our right trustee and well-beloved John Lord Viscount Percival of our Kingdom of Ireland, our trustee and well-beloved Edward Digby, George Carpenter, James Oglethorpe, George Heathcote, Heathcote Thomas Tower, Robert Moore, Robert Hux, Roger Holland, William Sloper, Francis Isles, um, John Larocci, James Vernon, William Belletha, Esquires, A. M. John Borton or Burden, B. D. Richard Bundy, A. M. Arthur Bedford, A. M. Samuel Smith, A. M. Adam Anderson and thomas corain gentlemen and such other persons as shall be elected in the manner here and after mentioned and their successors to be elected in the manner here and after directed be and shall be one body politic and corporate in dead and in name i'm sorry indeed and in name by the name of the trustees for establishing the colony of georgia in america and we do hereby for our heirs and successors ordain, will, and establish that for and during the term of 21 years to commence from the date of these one, these are letters patent, the, I'm sorry, to commence from the date of these are letters patent, the said corporation assembled for that purpose shall and may form and prepare law, statutes, ordinances fit and necessary for and concerning the government of the said colony and not repugnant to the laws and statutes of England. The state of Georgia is a corporation like other state of within the United States of America corporation. Its trustees listed above were, were the Anglo-Saxon people from British who were a, who once who were once property to the British brutish Moors shortly after the declaration of independence in 1776 and within the same year as the Articles of Confederation in 1778 the 13 colonies trustees formed the United States of the 13 colonies were the Delawares who were also recognized as the Delaware nation and they instituted the six article treaty with the Delawares. 1778, the Delaware nation were Moors and were nationals. They were all, they, I'm sorry, they are not to be mistaken as Indians, the treaty states. <coughs> the article of agreement and confederation made and entered into by Andrew and Thomas Lewis Esquires, commissioners for an in behalf of the United States of North America of the one part and cap and cap uh, white eyes cap John or oh, Captain White Eyes Captain John Kill Buck Jr. and Captain Pipe deputies of and chief men of the Delaware nations of their other party. Interesting read, guys. Interesting read. 
How y'all doing? So I've been on for an hour. Uh, thanks for your support. So make sure you hit the like button. Thanks for the donation support. Yes, thank you all. Great. Um, Grand Rising Empress D. Michelle. Welcome. Hope you got you some rest, love. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to our reading now. What y'all think about this reading? Talk to me in the chat now. Y'all real quiet. I see we got 10 people watching. What y'all think about the um, the information here? I'm going to continue on for another 40 minutes. Um, so don't worry. We'll probably get to through the um, this first section. And then I'll come back and go through the next chapters. All right. I hope I'm not boring y'all. I hope I'm able to help y'all comprehend what is being said. Um, at the same time, if not, like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and listen to it again myself. I know I'm stumbling over words and stuff like that, so forgive me. But it's just that type of read. So uh, moving on. Let me go back. It's, it's, it's interesting. I'm listening. All right, God. God. All right. Going on. It says Article 5. Whereas the Confederation entered into by the Delaware Nation and the United States renders the first dependent on the, on the latter for all articles of clothing, utensils, and implements of war. And it is judged not only reasonable, but indispensably necessary that the aforesaid nation be supplied with such articles from time to time. As far as, 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 far as the United States may have it um, in, the pow- in their power by a well-regulated trade under the conduct of an intellect, intelligent, candid uh, agent with an adequate salary, one more influenced by the love of his country and a constant attention to the duties of his department by promoting the common interest than the sinister purposes of for converting and binding all duties of his office to his private emolument. Convinced by the necessity of such measures, the commissioners of the United States at the earnest solicitation of the deputies aforesaid have engaged in behalf of the United States that such a trade shall be afforded said nation conducted on such principles of mutual interest as the wisdom of the United States in Congress assembled shall think most conducive to adopt for their mutual convenience. Article 6 whereas the enemies of the United States have endeavored by every artifice to, I'm sorry, by every artifice in their power to possess the Indians and in general with a, an opinion that is the design of the states aforesaid, aforesaid to ex, extirpate the Indians and take possession of their country to obviate such false suggestion. The United States do engage to guarantee to the aforesaid nation of Delaware and their heirs all their territorial rights in fullest in fullest and most ample manner, as it has been bounded by former treaties as long as the said Delaware nation sh- shall abide by and hold fast the chain of friendship now entered into. And it is further agreed upon by um, between the contracting parties, should it for the future be found conducive for the mutual interest of both parties to invite any other tribes in, who have been friends to the interests of the United States to join the present confederation and to form a state whereof the Delaware nation shall be the head and have a representation in Congress 
provided none, nothing contained in this article to be considered as condu conclusive until it meets with the approbation of Congress. And it is also the intent and meaning of this article to, I'm sorry, article that no protection or counter countenance shall be afforded to any part or to any who are at present our enemies, any by which they might escape the punishment they deserve. So I'm sorry for all that stumbling, guys. The fifth article describes why the Senate of Delaware is known as the first state. The Delaware nation provided an international agreement to enter into trade markets with the United States. The sixth article provides that the United States had real enemies known as the southern states who wanted to eradicate or re-enslave all the Indians from the slave trade with permission from the Moors of the Delaware nation, including any other nations who agreed to aid the United States. This treaty confirms that the Moors of the Delaware nation, including other nations, are truly aboriginal to the North America and are completely separate from the misnomer term Indian. So I'm not an Indian, guys. You are not Indian. I'm not an Indian. It's a misnomer. You are a Moor. If you are brown or yellow, red, fair-skinned, you're a Moor. This argument has been going on for long enough. You got the so-called Aboriginal Indigenous community warring with each other about who they are. Then they warring with the Moors community because you got bad Moors and good moors and at the end of the day you just need to accept the fact that you're more we are moors one of the most popular among the anglo-saxons was benjamin benjamin franklin and he expressed who were present in not just the americas but also the entire face of the earth franklin wrote many essays one of his most important writings was sent to peter collinson and richard jackson which appeared in the Gentleman's Magazine for November 1755 and the Scots Magazine for April 1756. In 1760 and 1771, it was printed with excisions. I'm sorry, excisions as an appendix to London, Dublin, Boston, and Philadelphia editions of Franklin's interest of Great Britain considered it was reprinted in part in in part in London Chronicle May uh, May 20th 1760 Franklin included it in the fourth edition of his exper experiments and observations of electricity in 1779 his essay can also be found within the Founders Archives.gov website, section 23 and 24 of the essay reads. And since detachments of English and Britain sent to America, and since detachments of English from Britain sent to America, will have their places at home so soon supplied and increased so largely here why should the palatine the meaning of an official or feudal lord having local authority <clears throat> that elsewhere belongs only to a sovereign bores meaning ill-mannered person be suffered to swarm into a settlement into our settlements and by herding together establish their language and manners to the exclusion of ours why should pennsylvania founded by the english become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as a as to germanize us instead of as i'm sorry as to germanize us instead of our anglifying them and will never adopt our language or customs 
any more than they can acquire our complexion, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white Anglo-Saxon people in the world is proportionably very small. All Africa is black or tawny, yellowish, red, golden, light-skinned. Asia is chiefly tawny. America, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Sp Spaniards and Italian, French, Russians, and Swedes were generally of what we call a swathy, dark olive skin complexion. Complexion as are the Germans also. The Saxons only accepted who with, who with I'm sorry, the Saxons only accepted who with the English make the principal body of people, principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I could wish their number were increased. And while we are, as I may call it, scouring our planet by clearing America of woods and so making the side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eye of inhabitants of Mars, of, in Mars or Venus, why should we, in the sight of our of superior beings, darken its people? Why increase the sun of Africa by planting them in America, where we have so far so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasingly. I'm sorry, of increasing the lovely white and red. Mm. But perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country for such kind of partiality is natural to mankind. Mm. Observations concerning the increase of mankind, 1751, founder, founders.archives.gov. The main thing to take away from Mr. Franklin's words in the 269 year ago is that 269 years ago, people known today as Blacks or African Americans were everywhere on the earth, and people known as Whites are properly known as the Anglo Saxons, are fairly new to inhabiting the earth, and largely and a large number of people referred to as either swarthy or tiny outnumbered them. Once the Republican government of the United States of America Corporation was formed in 1787, its constitution reformed to a democratic in 1789, as George Washington mentioned in his letter to the emperor. In, mentioned in his letter to the emperor. It was necessary for the Moors within the first Continental Congress to establish a treaty for commerce with Morocco's other dominions, Mohammedan nation. The treaty between the United States of America and His Imperial Majesty, the Imperial of Morocco of January 1787 can be obtained through the Library of Congress. The 26th article treaty begins with a preface addressing the ministers and Moroccan ambassadors for his majesty. The emperor, towards the ends of the preface before the seal of the majesty, it reads, hath arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between the United States of America and his majesty, the emperor of Morocco, which articles written in the Arabic language confirmed by his said majesty the emperor of morocco and sealed with his royal seal being translated into the language of the said united states of america together with the attestations thereto annexed are in the following words to wit in the name of almighty god this is a treaty of peace and friendship established between us and the united states of america which is confirmed and which we have our which we have ordered to be written in this book and sealed with our royal seal at the at our court of Morocco on the 25th day of the blessed month of, of uh, Saban 
in the year 1200 trusting in God it will remain permanent treaty peace of friendship treaties and other international acts of the United States of America edited by Hunter Miller volume 2 documents um, 140 1776 1818 or through 1818 Washington government printing office 1931 other evidence of the US residing in Morocco Mahometan nation can be found in public law 857 August 1st 1956 which reads whereas the councils of the United States of America are permitted to exercise jurisdictions over America nationals under the under the treaty between the United States and Morocco signed September 16 1836 and the act of Al 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 El Gesseris, I hope I'm saying that right, signed April 7th, 1906, Public Law 857, August 1st, 1956, 70 stat, page 774. To further clarify Public Law 857, the consuls of the U.S. are located in North America, Morocco, Mahometan Nation and the u.s is permitted jurisdiction over u.s nationals also known as u.s citizens by the treaty of september 16 1836 which is the morocco treaty of peace permission over american citizens can be found in articles 20 through 23. if any of the citizens of the united states or any persons under the, their protection shall have any disputes with each other, the council shall decide between the parties. And whenever the council shall require any aid or assistance from our government to enforce his decisions, it shall be immediately granted to him. Morocco Treaty of Peace, Article 20. And a citizen of the if a citizen of the United States shall should kill or wound a moor or on the contrary if a moor shall kill or wound the citizen of the united states the law of the country shall take place and equal justice shall be rendered the consul assisting at the trial of any and if any le uh, delinquent makes his escape the consul shall not be answerable for him in any manner whatsoever Morocco Treaty of Peace, Article 21. If an American citizen shall die in our country and no, and no will shall appear, the council shall take possession of his effects. And if there shall be no council, the effects shall be deposited into the hands of some person worthy of trust until the party shall appear who has a right to demand them. But if there, if the heir to the person deceased be present, the property shall be delivered to him without interruption. And if a will appears, the property shall be dis shall descend agreeable to that will as soon as the council shall declare the validity thereof. Morocco Treaty of Peace, Article Twenty Two: The two the councils of the United States of America shall reside in any seaport of our dominion they that they shall think proper and they shall be respected and any and enjoy all the the privileges <clears throat> which the council of any other nation enjoy and if any of the united of the citizens of the united states shall contract any debts or engagements the council shall not be in any manner accountable for them unless he shall have given a, a promise and written for the payment or fulfilling thereof without promise in writing no application to him for any redress shall be made. Morocco Treaty of Print of Peace, Article 23, Treaties of Other International Acts of the United States of America, edited by Hunter Miller, Volume 4, Document I-40 or 140, 1776 through 1880.
<laughs> the democracy was further matured by establishing a separate city side a body corporate for the District of Columbia fir formed on firm formed on February 21st 1871 the 40 the 41st Congress session 3 session uh, chapter 61 62 page 419 declares an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia known as the Organic Act of 1871 it reads an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia be enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled that all the part of the territory of the United States included within the limit of the District of Columbia be the same is hereby created within government by the name of the District of Columbia by which name it is hereby constituted a body corporate for municipal purposes and may contract and be contracted with sue and be sued plead and impleaded and be impleaded have a seal and exercise all of the powers of municipal corporation not existent not inconsistent with the constitution the laws of the united states of the provisions of this state of this act Organic Act of 1871. The Organic Act of 1871 is an act of Congress that re-appealed the individual charters of the cities of Washington and Georgetown and established a new territory government for the whole of D.C., the District of Columbia, controlling the world military, joined the other two city-states, Vatican City, controlling the world's religion, the London city controlling the world's financial law sector to make up the three corporations, the empire of the city that turns the world, I'm sorry, that runs the world. Due to the 14th Amendment, many people, including the Moors who once had title of nobility and were creditors on their land, the Americas, lost their lawful status and nationality and became subject to the District of Columbia by way of the Sultan allying with the Democratic uh, United States. Mm -hmm. This truth can be found in the Library of Congress titled Citizenship of the United States Expatriation. There are, there are strictly speaking and no morocco laws relating to citizenship of morocco subjects in morocco the fundamental law of this non-christian country are based entirely upon the islamic islamic code not part of the not part of which treats the subject of citizenship there are however num numerous treaties and conventions uh, between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire, by means of which citizenship in this country is defined by as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions that it is not the desire of the department to call for it or to call for a report upon such line. I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing which may possibly be of some use in connection with the information desired. Citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the law pertaining to the same in other countries with the exception that all, all persons residing in Morocco who cannot, foreign, who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are Consider ipso jury as more subjects. More subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country, having treaty relationships with the Moorish Empire. All right, let's see. Let's see how to go in this chapter. Mm-hmm.
Okay. Um, give me a moment, you guys. I'm just trying to look at the table of contents right quick. Okay, so it doesn't give page numbers. Okay, so let's see how we looking. We got 15 more minutes. Reading is fundamental, Empress. Great job. It's eye-opening. You good, Empress. All right, thank y'all. Things we were taught. The things we were taught, absolutely. All a lie. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out this reading for the next 15 minutes and we'll be done for the day. This definitely has been an um, interesting read, though. So let me get back to the page I was at. Oh. All right. So, page 34, the Moor lost their nationality after the Civil War by the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution and other nationalities. Due to the several treaties connected with the United States or U.S. and through naturalization and protection from the U.S., nationality is forfeited. The U.S. has maintained its position of power by utilizing deceiving contracts in which U.S. citizens, U.S. nationals, and even foreign nationals unknowingly submit consent to several contracts. The deceptive contractual offer that promotes protection and naturalization of the United States fall within the category of, the, of accepting benefits and privileges that the United States really gives to its citizens within the public sector. Therefore, it is a difference between operating in public and private, such as such benefits and privileges of the United States consist of or taking uncertified securities or uncertificated securities, including everything related to the social security number applications related to the driver's license and the so-called right to vote all of the above require the social security number to obtain a license or regular or red or, or registration or register to vote uh, locally and nationally the definition of a driver is an employee, one employed in conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicles with horse, horses, mules, or other animals, or bicycles, or a bicycle, tricycle, or motor car through not a street railroad car, though not a street railroad car. C. Davis versus Pen, uh, Petrinovich. Okay. And the definition of vote is suffrage, the expression of his will, preference, or choice formally manifested by a member of a legislative or deliberative body or of a const constituency or a body of qualified electors. In regard to the decision to be made by the body as a whole upon any proposed measure or proceeding, or the selection of an officer or representative and the and the aggregate of the expression or of will or choice though manifested by individuals is called 
the it's called tile vote of the body c maynard versus board of canvassers 84 midi okay upon comprehending the world or the word drivers lawful definition the only person rightfully deserving of the title operating a motor vehicle as a, an employee with a registered employer it doesn't stop there there is more to the term driving that may come as a surprise per the united states transportation code book title 94 motor vehicle means a vehicle machine tractor trailer or a semi-trailer propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used on public streets roads or highways but does not include a vehicle operated only on a rail line title 49 usc 31 301 part 4 5 motor vehicle operators license means a license is issued by a state authorizing an individual to operate a motor vehicle on public streets roads and and or highways the title 49 usc okay the title 49 united states code 31 301 section 6 7 and 8 and definitions of driver's license employee and employer in the transportation code book as follows driver's license means a driver's i mean a license issued by a state to the individual authorizing the individual to operate a motor vehicle on highways title 4 usc 31 301 part 6 7 employee means an operator can i'm sorry means an operator of a commercial motor vehicle including an independent contractor when operating a commercial motor vehicle who is employed by the employer title 49 usc 31301 part 7 employer means a person including the united states government a state or a political subdivision of a state that owns or leases a commercial motor vehicle or assigns employees to operate a commercial motor vehicle Okay, and continuing in subsection 31301, part 3 and 4 reads, a commercial driver's license means a license issued by a state to an individual authorizing the individual to operate as a class of commercial motor vehicles. Hmm. Title 49, U.S. Code 31301, part 3. Use in commerce to transcript. I'm sorry, use in commerce to pass to transport passengers or property that a that a has a gross vehicle weight routing of weight rating or gross vehicle weight of at least twenty six thousand one pounds, whichever is greater, or a lesser gross vehicle weighting route um weight rating a gross vehicle weight of the secretary of transportation prescribed by regulation but not less than any but not less than a gross vehicle weight rating of ten thousand and one pounds <clears throat> okay um this is the law dealing with motor vehicles which requires a driver's license to operate this is also describing what a commercial vehicle or commercial motor vehicle is in its weight class which requires a commercial driver's license but wait the lawmakers can have decided to move the true definition of motor vehicle from title 49 transportation code to uh, the title 18 crimes and criminal procedures title 18 usc 31 reads motor vehicles the term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contravent uh, contravance um propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes 
and um, on the highways and the transportation of passengers and property or property or cargo. The legal code and sub, uh, statutes, sorry, the legal code and statute state a motor vehicle is for commercial purposes, purposes only. Carrying passengers or their property require a, li a driver's license or a commercial driver's license. Many Americans drive small and large compact crossover SUVs and, and trucks throughout the United States of America with family, friends, and their blurry friend and their furry friends. Question, does the government consider all these above to be legal passengers? Well, Title 49 USC Code, subsection 32101, part 10, provides an unclear understanding, a clear understanding um, which reads 10 passenger motor vehicle means a motor vehicle with motive power designed to carry no more than 12 individuals but not but does not include a motor a motorcycle or a truck not designed primarily to carry its operator its operator or its passengers hmm a passenger a passenger motor vehicle must be a motor vehicle that provided a commercial purpose and seat a maximum of 12 people any car sold among average families does not meet these standards um, but what exactly does this law mean when it states a motive mo motive power for passenger motor vehicles, will uh, well, Western Dictionary 1828 defines it as anyone who holds a driver's license does not uh, drive local motive cargo trains vehicles to and from work or take their families or on the take annual trip. On that take annual trip, if people are not drivers because they are not employees working for an employer going to the gym grocery store or to and from work and they're not operating a motor vehicle since they're not uh, engaging in any action for um com for commercial purposes then why the need for a driver's license the legal codes and statutes explain in the 49th title, subsection 32901, part 3, which reads, except as provided in section 32908 of the title, automobile means a four-wheel vehicle, which is propelled by fuel, nor by protection, I'm sorry, nor or by alternative fuel uh, manufactured uh, primarily for use on public streets, roads, and highways, and rated at less at less uh, 10,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. The truth is in plain sight. Regular, everyday people do not operate motor vehicles. They operate automobiles on a non-commercial level. Not needing a driver's license, suppose one is not operating in a motor vehicle or passenger vehicle on behalf of an employer and that automobile weighs less than 10,000 pounds. In that case, the person is not driving. They are simply traveling as a traveler and on land and not on as an employed driver in the unit in the United States. All vehicle manufacturers have an average curb weight for compact cars at 29.19 pounds, mid sized cars that. 3,361 uh, large cars at 3,882 pounds, compact trucks or SUVs at 3,590 pounds, mid sized trucks 4,404 pounds, and large trucks or SUVs at 5,603 pounds. The current largest weight truck for SUV available for per personal use and not commercial use as an employee is the 2001 Ford, Ford F-50 Super Duty 
crew cab weighing 86,000, I mean, 8,600 pounds. It is less than the minimum curb weight requirement to classify a traveler as a driver requiring a driver's license. Wow. All right. So I think I'm going to stop there, you guys. My eyes are getting heavy. I'm stumbling over too many words. Um, I appreciate y'all as well. What's up, James? How you doing today, brother? Um, so, um, with that being said, guys, if you'd like to make a donation to continue the development of this research and the study, um, you know, to help motivate me to come on here and continue reading, whatever the case may be, um, you know, the information you can find in the description area of the video or you can email me, okay? Um, so donations can be sent to any of those that are in the description area of this video or you can email me um, and I'll have to give you the Cash App if you're using Cash App because I did not put the Cash App up there. So with that being said, you guys, I truly appreciate you all's support and your love and your generosity um come check out freedom writers you gotta join um you gotta sign an nda and go through a screening process with me personally in order to be um accepted into freedom writers after it is um your non-disclosure agreement is signed so you know we're looking forward to building with more people i just kicked out more uh, dead weight that was just sitting there not doing anything not participating i'm a type of person that i want participatory type of community you have to be participating and showing up in order to be involved in my community and so far it has been growing tremendously well and i'm so happy for everyone that is involved and i just love each and every last one of um, the members there that bring me such great joy uh, just being able to help individuals, help people, and um, we learn and educate ourselves, uplift one another, um, and grow together. So, <clears throat> with that being said, you guys, um, reach out to me if you're interested in being a part of our community, okay? All right. And this is really, I'm really, my community is really for beginners um, in this uh in this fight and people that are you know similar um that have been studying as well so you all have a wonderful beautiful rest of your saturn day i'm going to get off of here and grab me some something to eat if i possibly can um I'm super hungry and thirsty now because all this reading. Anyone can feel free to buy me lunch today. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, I'm going to get off of here. Um, I appreciate y'all most definitely. And with that being said, it is your girl, Empress Shea Marie. I'll see y'all on the next video we'll come back and continue the reading this book is fairly long it is about 275 pages but it is very good so we're going to continue on with this book and then i'll come back at a later time and finish the the trust book um but i highly recommend you just go to my um i have a link also in the description area uh and on the in the community section where you can go and check out all of the books that i recommend um on my Amazon link. Matter of fact, let me grab that and put it in the in the chat for you all, so that you all can start grabbing some of these books, and um, and uh, grabbing some of these books for yourselves. So I'll put that link in the description area for you. So give me a moment, pretty please. You all know I'm an advocate of reading and getting people to read more. So that's extremely important.
Okay. <clears throat> I'm grabbing the link for you all. All right. Someone suggested uh, about a week ago that I sign up to be an influencer for Amazon. So you can go to this link um, from my community. I'll have to just uh, share this particular post with you all. Um, let me see here. Okay, here it is. I've got the link for you. So let me put it in the chat for y'all. Let me put it in the chat. So there you all go. So any book that you purchase from Amazon, from my link, I will get a percentage of the sale, you all. That helps to continue the research and development as well. So I, I realize I've, I've been reading these books and promoting them. Why not, you know, you know, people are going to buy them. So why not get a percentage of, of what I'm bringing here without you all having to come out of your pocket double time to send me a donation or anything like that. So if you want to get the books, um, my recommendation of books, some of that I've already read on this channel and some that we'll be reading in the future. So with that being said, um, I appreciate you all. Thank you all for your time, your love and considerations. And I will see you all on my next video. Peace to everyone.